I'm Rama K. Ramaswamy with Wellesley Media, and we're here today with my colleague, Paul Falcone, with Wellesley Media, and we're at Gorse Mill Studios to film the ceramics intensive program and students who've been making recoup style pottery here. Red has always been my favorite color, and I really like to play around with like the different, like kind of crystally um, glazes. So I have some like tints of blue here, and I also really like to melt glass into my pieces. So when you put them in the kiln, I just put glass tiles, and I really like the way that it crystallizes when it comes out. So that's kind of my inspiration behind this. Wow, that looks awesome. And what what about all the dots? Did you paint that in after? Or? Oh yeah. So um, what I did first was I um, glazed the entire thing red, and then I used um, like a little tool, and I just did dots around it. Okay, yeah, and so then I just I just came up with a design in my head and just made it out. Is this also considered Raku style? No, actually my Raku style piece is right here. Um, so I used a bunch of different glazes and I used like some copper tones um, and I just played around with the different shades and um, when it came out it kind of showed everything. So I have some gold metallics like right here and I have copper right here. So it's just, it's really fun the way that it came out. And I, you never know with Raku what you're gonna get, so it's kind of exciting to see. So um, I glazed it first, so I bisque fired it first, and then I glazed it, and then after we took it out of the kiln, um, we had a metal trash can ready with um, sawdust and you know newspapers and kind of just like a bunch of different things. And when you put it in there, because it's so hot from the kiln, it instantly lights on fire. And then you um, kind of put another, you put a lid on and you kind of let it just simmer in the fire for a little bit. And then when you take it out, this is what you're gonna get. And, and how long does it take for it to do its thing and cool down? Yeah, so um, it takes, like, I want to say around two hours, two and a half, three hours um, to go when you glaze it, put it in the kiln, and then take it out and when it rests in the trash can. So it's a, it's a couple hours process, but it's really fun, yeah. What's your most favorite uh, part about this course and this class? Um, I just really like the environment that we're in. Um, you know, Ms. Larson really pushes us to try and try new things and kind of, you know, be at our best. And um, as a class, we really help each other help each other out a lot. And it's really nice to be in that kind of environment. <laughs> who, who made the little uh, animal type? That's Lily McRae. She's not here right now, but she will be here soon. What is that supposed to be? A mouse? It's a monster. Um, yeah, we had an assignment that was to make a monster anyway. Um, you wanted to, and she made that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, very creative. Um, hi, I'm Julian Bonhoff. I'm a junior, and um, I made, made this one. Um, this one was kind of challenging because it was made out of porcelain, which is a lot harder to work with than the regular um, stoneware clay that we use. Um, also, the distorting was also kind of tough because um, often I'll do it too much and then it'll just break and flop. But other than that, it was a pretty average process and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So you're an artist who likes challenges. You like destroying your artware first. And so what version is this? Is this version 2, 3? Um, this is version... I'm not sure. Because I put it under the category of distorting my pieces. Um, and I have another one over there, the red one, um, that I distorted too. And I've distorted a, a bunch of other pieces. So this is really just still just another step in the whole process. And is this considered Raku as well? Um, no, this is not Raku, actually. All of our Raku pieces are right over there. Um, yeah. And what is it about distorting them that you enjoy? Um, I like, um, I don't know, that's kind of a really good question. I like the randomness, and I like um, just the, uh, the unknown, because you don't know if it's going to work, if it's not going to work, if it's going to look good, if it's going to look bad, how much can you work with it before it completely explodes right in your face, so I kind of like it.
Yeah, not so much the exploding in your face part, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and, and what about you? What was your favorite part of doing this and taking this class? Um, well, I've taken this class in sophomore year, so this is my third year in the class. Um, it's pretty much like my favorite thing to do, which is cool. Um, yeah, I'm in there like all the time I have. And at my school we do a senior project, which is where all seniors in the fourth term can opt out of classes if they have um, high enough grades and like do something of their choice that gives back to the community. So um, me and one other girl, she's right over there, Sarah, um, are working in the ceramics room to organize it. So I get to be there like almost all day and I get to see all the classes come in and all the kids like learn throughout like the months how to do this and it's really it's really cool to watch. Um, so, hi, I'm Samantha Simon. Um, I'm a senior at the Wesley School. Um, so I made this piece um, pretty recently. I threw it um, first and then I cut out individual um, slits from the major shape. I can't even imagine how you would make this, so walk us through the process of how this happens. Um, so first you like throw kind of a bowl shape and then you have to collar in the top so that this gets super thin um, and then I had to let it dry for a while so that it was just more stable and then I could carve out the... So you have to actually cut it out very precisely. Yeah, yes. And then you fire it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't change shape when you put it in the kiln? Um, well, actually, it, it, it was a lot taller than this, but in the kiln it actually shrunk down, yeah. And do you buffer it on all, all sides to keep the shape? Sorry, do you buffer it on all sides to keep the shape? Like, what do you mean buffer it? Like, so that it doesn't distort on one side or versus the oh, other? Oh, yeah, I have to stick, like, little plastic bags in between each thing to, like, keep them from collapsing. Yeah. Wow, that is absolutely stunning. Thank you. Thank you. What's, what's your most favorite thing about this class? Um, I think this is a really good group of people. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've made a bunch of different types of pieces. Some are pitchers, some are bowls, some are mugs, vases, all using different mediums. Some are made with raku clay, which we fire a different way. Some are porcelain, some are just regular white clay, and some are speckled, um, and they all help to enhance the piece. So why so many varieties? Um, I think that throwing with different types actually changes the way you look at a piece and the way that it actually like kind of creates itself. And, and what's your favorite one? Do you have one? Um, well, I just finished a pitcher slash teapot. It's kind of like a really big one. And I really like it because this time I used earthy tones for the glazing, and I've never done that. So that's my favorite right now. And, and what do you like most about this class? Um, I love it. It's just an outlet for me. It, it's super, super soothing, and it helps me literally just go through my day. And why did you pick an earthy tone for your latest glaze? Um, I've never done it, so I was like, oh, this would be a good idea. And um, it also fit with the shape and style of the pitcher. So it sounds like your teacher doesn't mind a fair amount of experimentation. Yeah, she loves it. She, en she encourages it. Well, the kids really have done a great job. Uh, they put the show together from start to finish. So we walked in Tuesday to come and set up this show, and the previous show was still up. So I had 14 students in here, and we couldn't do anything. So talk about a growth mindset. We had to change gears and come up with a plan instead of being able to install. And all the students had to come on their own time to figure out what was going to be the best layout. And I think that's just as much a part of the process as the artwork itself. Um, their work collectively is is really beautiful and stunning, but I also think that setting up the show is just as much a part of what I want them to see and be a part of. And um, you know, it's a lot of uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and they they were able to do it. And it's really nice to see the variety in their styles. So the intensive program, it's a year long program, and it's a combination of assigned. Uh, projects and independent work so I want to make sure that they have enough time to work on what they are passionate about and also meet different criteria for things that I want them to achieve throughout the year. So each of your students do they get a certain goal or a certain target they're supposed to hit for their individual works? So the way I did it this year they had since we are um, 10 weeks is one term so for each term, they had an assigned project, and then they also had an independent project. So we checked in each term to see if they had completed their independent and also their assigned. And then we had critiques, and um, so they all have their own individual goals, yeah. Yeah. And, and I hear you're open to a fair amount of experimental uh, ceramic street. <laughs> yes. So... Uh, 
We run everything in electric kilns. Um, there's lots of different ways to fire kilns. And we come and do a raku fire, which the pieces that look really metallic and black, those are pieces that we fire outside. Um, so we do that here, actually, outside of this gallery. And then we tried a horsehair firing at the school. We took the pieces out of the kiln at 1,600 degrees with tongs and with masks on in the kiln room with the vents on and put horsehair on them. And the horsehair uh, smells like burning hair. And it attaches to the clay piece and burns and coils up like calligraphy. And they are beautiful, but um, we the smell definitely permeated the room. So... We won't do that again. <laughs> well, until next year. Until next year. <laughs> How do you feel about the color coordination of the setup in here today? I see that they grouped everything by color. Yeah, that was all the students. I wasn't here when they made that choice, and I think it looks great. I think one of the things that um, I'm really drawn to is the black and white table. Um, I didn't realize how many students did things in pure black and white until seeing them all as a group. So they did a really nice job of organizing. And, and I see there's a beautiful collection of miniature ceramics as well. What was the, the idea behind doing those? So it's all by one student. Uh, and Carmen, so Carmen Chung is the artist for all the minis. And she is really into just the detail and she throws things really small and they're all thrown on the wheel and even the small teapot is functional yeah awesome yeah fantastic what was your favorite part of this year's group of crop of students um so we call ourselves ceram fam and they have a ceramic instagram and not only were they posting like quick time videos of themselves but they also found other artists to follow and they would really i think they really thrived on each other's energy